Hey, what is up, YouTube? This is the Merman Master coming at you guys again from the Team Time Riders Yugi Tube channel. And that's right, guys, I am back here with a brand new deck profile for you guys, courtesy of the one and only Eric Demore, famous from his uh, his Octopus uh, Ice Barrier deck profile, as well as a number of other profiles on the channel. He joins his brother, Daniel Demore, uh, both of them out of North Andover, Massachusetts in uh, becoming some powerful uh, Yu-Gi-Oh players and uh, the key guys who, you know, sort of made these decks. And Eric Damore actually submitted something to the Lucas Peterson deck uh, creation program, and I'm bringing to you guys the updated version of that. Um, so this deck right here is a Bujin deck profile, and this Bujin deck is focusing around the original stuff. So we're not running any links in here, we're not doing any of that kind of stuff, but what we are focusing on here is Ties of the Brethren. Um, we don't care about extra linking, really, but it's about coming back to the roots of Bujins. Now, this deck is not really going to do anything in your locals, it's, you know, it might top or something like that, but uh, don't bring this to a regional. And this is not to say that, you know, the deck build itself is bad, but rather that Bujins is an archetype, unless they get something new are very very slow right now and not really as able to compete as other stuff so without further ado guys let's get into this so to start out this would not be a bujin deck without the one and only triplicate copies of bujin yamato bujin yamato is probably one of the main cards in the deck so we're starting off right now with the beast warriors and for those of you guys who don't know how bujins work because um let's be honest we haven't seen this deck in quite a while and a lot of people have started playing in links. This is a six or seven year old deck right now. Uh, Bujins are functioning around two main kind of ideas. It's you have beast warrior monsters who stay on the field um, and as long as you um, and then once you have the beast warrior monsters on the field it's kind of like a protect the castle thing like you would with like towers. Um, you protect them with your wing beast monsters which get you effects in the hands and your beast um, your just your normal beast type monsters which do things while they are in the graveyard. So I'll explain a little bit more about it when we get into it, but we're going to start here with the Beast Warriors. The Beast Warriors are sort of your main kind of guys, and you want to always have a Beast Warrior on the field at any time for Bujins. The next card we have, so Bujin Yamato, before we get on, its effect is you can add one Bujin card from your deck to your hand and then discard a card from your hand to the graveyard during the end phase. And um, this is really good for not only searching Bujins that work in the hand and discarding ones from your hand that are useless in the hand but work in the graveyard, um, or just taking something directly from your deck and putting it in the graveyard, you know, through your hand. Um, there's a variety of different ways to use this effect, and the, the idea sort of behind the deck is to have a kind of way to protect this card so that you have a continuous stream of... Um, of things getting into your graveyard and the more you know you, you build up your protection and different stuff like that so very very old deck but uh still very good next beast warrior that we have here is two copies of bujin mikazuchi thinking about cutting this down to one but with this particular build it's very very good to have at two bujin mikazuchi is a very good card because when a bujin type monster is destroyed on your side of the field you can special summon this card from your hand and then if a bujin card was sent from your hand to the grave you can search any bujin spell or trap from your deck to your hand the only spell and trap for the bujins that we do run is bujin carnation which is a very very good kind of late game card to have but uh, bujin mikazuchi is nonetheless a very very good card next since this is a ties of the brethren build we got two bujin arasuda in here arasuda is going to be your main kind of um uh He's probably, I would say, the worst one, I think. Um, he can special summon when a Bujin is banished from your grave, uh, which is sort of how the Bujins work. They banish from your graveyard to get their... Um, like, the beasts banish themselves from the grave to get their effects off, and then you can also banish Bujins for, like, other effects or different other things. So when one is banished, um, you can special summon Arasuda to the field. And so Arasuda is very, very good when combined together with... Bujin Hirume. And this is the only one that cannot be special summoned off of Ties of the Brethren. Um, it must first be special summoned using its own effect by banishing a Bujin monster 
from your graveyard in order to special summon this card. So you combine it together. If you've got uh, Bujimons from your grave and you've got Harume and an Arasuda, then um, you can banish uh, you can banish whatever it was in your grave and special Harume, and then Arasuda allows itself to be special summon. Um, Arasuda and Harume both have their own effects, but you won't use them as often as you use those of uh, Yamato and Mikazuchi. Arasuda's effect, uh, when a card, a Bujin card is searched from your deck to the hand, you can uh, draw a card and discard one. And then Harume, if it's destroyed, um, both players discard one card from their hand, if both have one. So that's it for the Beast Warriors, the main cards that you want to see on the field. Beast Warriors are both in the main and in the extra deck. Um, you always have to have a Beast Warrior, so that that's why you can use the rest of these cards. The last Beast Warriors that we have here are three copies of Bujin Hiruko. Uh, Bujin Hiruko is also a very, very good card. Um, just an extra Beast Warrior name for Ties of the Brethren, but also has a pretty good Pendulum effect. By banishing itself, you can stack um, XYZ monsters for the Bujins on top of each other. So if you have Susanoo, you can go into Kagutsuchi or to Tsukiyomi um, without necessarily having to have all of the materials required. So this guy is very... You know, he's not the best one, um, but he's definitely one that you got to run and um, can really get you some good bonuses. And whenever he is banished, of course, you can. He is someone who self banishes from the Pendulum Zone, so you can bring him back to the field with Buj Incarnation and go for more Shenan in plays from there. So he does combo with a couple of other cards in the deck, as is Eric Damore and Daniel Damore's Wishes. Now, moving on to the Wing Beast, we only run three Wing Beasts. Three Bujin, uh, Bujingi Crane. Bujingi Crane is basically like an honest for whatever Bujin Beast Warrior is on the field. It can't boost any other Bujin. It can only do for a Beast Warrior. This is why having a Bujin Beast Warrior on the field is so, so important, is because of this card. Bujingi Crane will basically just help out the field and do a variety of different things. Um, you can search it to the hand and have it always in there as kind of like a deterrent for your opponent. So, very, very good card. A lot of people like to run this card at two. I personally prefer three in this particular build. Very, very good. Next card that we have in here are two Bujingi Hare and two Bujingi Turtle. Now, Bujingi Hare prevents monsters from being destroyed by battle and card effects once while you banish a Beast Warrior type Bujin monster. And then Bujingi Turtle um, prevents the targeting of a Bujin, uh, a Bujin type Beast Warrior monster. Um, by banishing it from the graveyard. So two very, very strong cards that you always want to have in your graveyard. Um, I usually like to send hair first and then turtle later, um, but this is back when targeting effects were a big thing. Um, and of course now things are sort of different, but these are, you know, this these two combined with crane are sort of the main ways that you will keep and protect a Bujin Beast Warrior on the field. Don't worry because um, even though they don't have their ways to discard themselves, they do have their own sort of abilities for that kind of stuff. Next card we have is one copy of Bujingi Quillen. Uh, this card can banish itself while you control a Bujin Beast Warrior to destroy a face-up card on the field. Um, very, very good card. Good for destroying monsters or popping problematic back row. And finally, for the Bujin Beast Warriors, is one Bujingi Sinew. And Sinew um, is basically like an Honest in your graveyard. So you run a lot of like Honest-type monsters here to prevent your Bujin monsters from being destroyed by battle. Unfortunately, though, it doesn't stop non-targeting, non-destruction removal. Uh, that is the bane of this deck's existence. And unfortunately, something that but you have to deal with as a Bujin player. The last two monsters in the deck are two copies of Honest. Uh, uh, obviously, everything is light, so you gotta have Honest in the deck. All right, and that's gonna wrap it up for the monsters. Now moving on to the spells. Of course, we got three Tenkis. You wanna, you wanna get Bujin Beast Warriors, specifically Yamato, to your hand as fast as you possibly can. Um, these guys are like, you know, the main sort of parts of your deck and tanky also gives that nice hundred boost which you just which you'd be surprised actually can be pretty good to to boost the already high attacks of your bujin monsters up slightly higher to get over certain threats now since we run bujingi hiruko this deck would not be complete without three copies of yosogai or unexpected guy or unexpected die as they call it um yosogai or yosodai is an excellent card um 
for special summoning when you control no monsters. Um, a level 4 or lower normal monster to the field. Bujins do have a very, very tough time putting card advantage on board. And so getting uh, Yoso Guy in your hand first turn and being able to get out Hiruko um, as a normal monster and then um, normal summoning any Bujin to go for an XYZ is a very, very good play. Now, onto the part of the deck that we have all been waiting for. And that is my triple kit copies here of Ties of the Brethren. It took me a long time to get these. These are all Euro print English edition versions. Um, and Ties of the Brethren is a good, good card because the basic focus of this card is on special summoning monsters that have the same uh, type and attribute but different names. Yugi originally used this for the gadget monsters, but it's just as useful here in the Bujins. If you summon a Bujin Yamato, uh, Mikazuchi, or Arasuda, or even have like a Harume or something already on board, you can activate Ties of the Brethren, and at the cost of 2,000 life points, you can special summon any Bujin monster. So let's say, you know, for instance, I normal summon um, Arasuda. For instance, I'm going to, you know, give just a small example here. I can use Ties of the Brethren and special Mikazuchi and special Yamato. During the end phase of this turn, um, Bujin Yamato's effect will activate, allowing me to draw one and discard one. When I send one to the graveyard, Mikazuchi will allow me to search the spell card, and then Arasuda will then allow me to draw one card and discard one card. So, um, you know, Bujins are all about that long-term gain. You're not really focused on too much short-term stuff here, but uh, you can see that Ties of the Brethren can produce a situation that might even be you know, preferable in some, to some people's uh, opinions than even having the, um, than even having the, uh, the other monsters. And this is also really, really good as well, because um, I purposely left a lot of beast type monsters in the deck. So we have all of these guys. There are four different beast types that we do run here that we can use with Ties of the Brethren. And, um, Basically, these guys, you know, if you get any one of these in your hand, um, you could get the other two of your light beast type level four monsters out onto the field. And then um, basically just sort of like, you know, if you have an honest or whatever, you keep them around. Even if they're destroyed, you just basically have an e a quick and easy way to either get them to the graveyard or get them to the banish zone so that they can be used to fuel your beast warriors during the next turn. So very, very good and um, cannot be sort of underestimated on that front. All right, so the next cards that we have here that I'm going to go over is two copies of, of course, um, Bujin Incarnation. When you control no monsters as well, special summon one Bujin from your grave and one from your banished zone. Um, in my previous Bujin deck profile, I ran this in combination with Effect Veiler and other level 1 tuners to be able to make an instant Trishula. But here it's going to be used only for your XYZs, going into any Beast, Beast Warrior, or Wing Beast type XYZ monster, of which Castell, the Sky Blaster Musketeer, is one, um, as well as Diamond Direwolf, which we will go into in a little bit. All right. Now, moving on from that, we have Dark Hole as a one of in here, but you can switch that up with a Raigeki if you want, and then finally Foolish Burial. Now for the final uh, cards in the deck, we're running two copies of Royal Decree and one Solemn Warning. Very, very low trap card count here, and then the final three trap cards we've got are the three dimensional barrier. Um, this is just to stop, you know, all of the other stuff, but I, you know, you can run like whatever you want in place of Dimensional Barrier, because obviously now Link decks are a huge thing, so it wholly depends on your locals, what you want to do with that. But Dimensional Barrier had its time in the sun, and it went bye-bye pretty dang fast. So guys, before this video gets too long, I'm going to go over my extra deck. Start out, we have the Bujin XYZ monsters, and I'm just going to lay them all right out here. Two Bujin, uh, Bujin Te Susanowo, which requires two Bujin monsters. A Bujin Te Kagutsuchi, which requires two Beast Warriors. Bujin Tsukiyomi, which requires um, two level four light monsters. And Bujinki Amaterasu, which requires any three level four monsters. All three of these are really, really good for the Bujin deck. Um, you guys probably remember Tsukiyomi as being the main kind of card behind uh, 
the whole ABC phenomenon that happened at the end of uh, Master Rule 3. Uh, but it its original thing was here in Bujins. Um, so basically Tsukiyomi has its ability, um, you can ditch a card, ditch your whole hand to the graveyard to draw two, and then if this thing has Bujins attached to it, um, for the number of Bujins that are attached, if it's like destroyed, then you can special summon those monsters to the field. So that's really good. Bujin Ki Amaterasu is really good as a way to basically recycle your um, your banish zone and special summon monsters. So if you got a whole bunch of crap in your banish zone, um, during your turn, you can special summon a monster to that zone, and then during your opponent's turn, you can add one back to your hand. Uh, Bujin Kagutsuchi allows you to mill five from your deck to the grave, and it gains 100 attack for each one. And then if a Bujin monster um, would be destroyed, you can detach a material from Kagutsuchi instead. So um, Kagutsuchi was very big back in the era when Maestroke um, and Gachi Gachi and Tetsu were sort of a big thing and you know you had to you just had to like rack up destruction levels in order to to get at them and then finally of course you got Bujin, uh, Bujinte Susanowo who is the one who you go into the most um, Bujinte Susanowo basically just allows you to um, search any Bujin from your deck to your hand or send one from your deck to the graveyard it's helped you fill up quite a lot and then its second effect basically allows you to attack everything that your opponent controls once each so really, really, really good card. Um, and if you combine this together with Honest and with a Bujin uh, Crane, you know, you've got some freaking awesome movements out here. So it's uh, <laughs> cannot be underestimated and can end games in an instant. Now moving on to the rest of the extra deck. Of course, this wouldn't be an extra deck uh, with level fours if we didn't have uh, Baguska, the Terribly Tired Tapir. Very, very good card. Um, Really glad it was a super. Everyone thought it was going to be a prize card. So I think a lot of people are glad that it wasn't. Um, and then we have Gagaga -ga -ga Samurai for those twice attacking. It's Teller Knight Delteros. When you get three Bujins on board, um, you can go for this to destroy things that your opponent controls. Then we have Castell, the Sky Blaster Musketeer, one of those winged beast monsters. And Star Liege Paladynamo uh, for light monsters, negate something. Uh, by detaching two materials, swing over it, and then if this thing is destroyed itself, you get to draw a card. Uh, not as fast or as capable as other things right now, but still a very, very good card. And uh, then, of course, we guys uh, gotta have Abyss Dweller in here with Burning Abyss making a resurgence, and a lot of people saying that Cherubim is gonna be coming very, very soon for those Burning Abysses. Gotta have Abyss Dweller to make sure that, uh, that you guys are doing your stuff. Um, I'm still waiting for an Ulti Abyss Dweller. I think a lot of people are. Uh, hopefully one will be re released in the near future, but nobody knows. And then finally, to round out our XYZs, of course, guys, we have one copy of Tornado Dragon for popping spells and traps in the back row. One copy of Diamond Direwolf. You know why he's in here. One copy of Steel Swarm Roach. And then finally, the singular copy of Evil Swarm Exiton Knight. That's right, guys. He is back, and he is ready to rumble. And we are so, so glad to have Evil Swarm Exiton Knight back at one. Um, so, guys, that about wraps up the deck profile. Um, once again, big shout-outs and big thank you to Eric and Daniel Damore of the Damore family in North Andover, Massachusetts, for their continued support and their love of the Bujin archetype. With that being said, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe to the Team Time Riders YouTube channel for more awesome content just like this. This has been the Mermail Master, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.